Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be talking about Baptiste, or more importantly, how to counter him. The new hero in Overwatch definitely has the tools to take over games if you let him. This video is all about shutting down his value as best as you can because once Baptiste isn't getting big value with his kit, he's effectively doing nothing. And seeing as he's about to be everywhere in ranked, we thought this guide would be very welcome. The first thing you need to understand is that a lot of Baptiste's biggest impact comes from getting value out of Immortality Field. It's powerful but on an eye-wateringly long cooldown and if you can bait this ability out or avoid it altogether then you've already done most of the work. Think of Immortality Field like a May wall in terms of its importance for the character. If May wastes her wall she's kind of useless. The same is true of Baptiste. So what are your options for countering the field? Well there are several and some might think range damage is the answer. Shooting the Immortality Field with heroes like Widow, Hanzo and Ash can take it down quite quickly with Hanzo taking two fully charged arrows and Ash and Widow taking three shots, albeit that Widow could probably finish it off with an SMG burst after two full strength shots. McCree isn't such a strong option because depending on range it's a four to five shot task and players will know just how sharply his range fall off occurs. Soldier fares a bit better on that front and it takes just over half a clip or 13 bullets to destroy it and his ult can obviously target it but honestly Soldier is pretty trash as a pick even after his buff even being slightly unfavoured arguably when directly fighting Baptiste himself. Arisa is a decent option as a tank if you're looking to play this way because she has plenty of ammo and and can shoot from range by design, that's what she wants to be doing. When the immortality field is down, then ranged heroes do have a distinct advantage. Their ability to take angles on their targets means that they can pull apart a comp that Baptiste is waiting to protect while on cooldown, like when teams use a field to ride cart, which at least initially could be quite common. However, range damage still gets beaten by brawly death balls, with lots of shielding when fighting on point, which is obviously map dependent. In that context, it's quite possible for your tanks to be overrun while you're trying to take it down and even if you do will you still have windows to focus down what was using its protective value but have more barriers of their own arguably not what does counter it, and this is the same for the May Wall example, is using mobility to kite away from its value and then re-engage. Dive heroes and comps are designed to do this and as such represent one of the best options against Baptiste's field. There is a sentiment that Baptiste is good against dive because the field can render and engage by dive tanks and DPS a bit toothless. However, dive is one of the only comps that can decide not to fight whenever it wants. This ability to disengage effectively is what makes them act actually good against him. This is a classic example of footsies, go within range of your opponent's best ability, bait them into using it, then retreat out of range and whiff punish its long cooldown once it's gone. If you as the player can get Baptiste to waste his best cooldown, then you've already done a lot of the job. Dive also benefits from not having to play all together. They can collapse onto a target for focus obviously, but they don't have to is the point. Immortality Field wants to get big value when teams are all bunched up, sinking big cooldowns or ults into each other. There it does give you a really distinct advantage. But when you don't do that and instead present Baptiste with several smaller angles of attack, the Baptiste player has a tough decision to make. Which one of the contact points does he use his field on? Any single one of them could be the tipping point and he only has one field to deploy. I'll expand this point later when we talk about specific heroes, but the strategy of trying to stretch a Baptiste comp's attention is sound whatever comp you're playing, unless of course you're playing Death Ball, that he is really good at fending off and he himself will be a very slippery target to focus. To help frame all this, think about how most team fights start with a poke phase. If a Baptiste uses Immortality Field in that poke phase, then it's essentially just another barrier, except not as good as a barrier in practice. How can that be Eddie? It stops people from dying. Well think about what you could be running in Baptiste's place. If you're in a poke phase against ranged damage say, and you have a Brig, then her barrier does more than the field because she can just use her barrier to actively close the distance between your comp and that ranged damage. We all know what Brig does to damage heroes as in most of the time kill them for free and she gets to do that because her barrier is so strong. They can't stop her taking that space. Immortality Field can't do that dynamically like that. It can be used to enable your own ranged damage to take some space and control map through sight lines and angles but if your opponent's pathing is good then they can get around that. The 
truth about Baptiste and Immortality Field is that it has to get value to be justified in being picked. The best scenario for him is by using it, he creates a situation where your team has to take it down. Outside of that, you can shimmy him with your movement into wasting it and then it's party time. The next biggest exploitable factor is the power of crowd control. If you remember back to my Doom is Back video, I made the case that one of the biggest reasons why Doom is so strong in the Baptiste matchup is because none of his abilities care if you're in a field or not, because they can very easily crowd control you out of its protection for a kill. Well, this concept is writ large here because there's a lot of heroes that can manipulate your positioning, especially when you consider the changes to boops that are like accompanying Baptiste going live. Arisa and Roadhog can destroy a target that thinks they're safe in a field with a halt hook combo, dragging them out to their death. Arisa halt can be hard to get the height or width necessary to fully take a target out of the field, but it can be done depending on your range. If you're following up with a combo though, that won't matter. Even if you do just get a target out of the field for a split second, a range damage option can easily finish it off. Roadhog in general looks to be a good pick because he doesn't need Arisa, although she certainly helps. Even his ult, if not interrupted, can launch multiple targets away from Baptiste's protection in one fell swoop. It's one of that ultimate's best uses, in fact. We've already established Doomfist doesn't care because he's so in and out. In a duel, Baptiste doesn't have the time or the firepower to stop him. Wrecking Ball can take advantage of his buff to stay in ball form, get shields off of bunched up enemies and knock them away all at once, even if his pile driver doesn't quite make targets go high enough to not be covered by the field. Winston can use Primal to send targets flying. Lucio Boops can also have the desired effect too, especially if you get underneath your target and boot them up and away like you would do to a Rhine. Ash's Coach Gun too acts very similarly. Junkrat Mines send targets flying out of the field, easily exploitable by any teammate looking to follow up. May's Ice Wall can be used against enemies to push them up and out of the field, much like she can do against a Bastion comp, which might come in handy if your opponents are using the field on a cart like I mentioned earlier. There is an important note about how CC behaves on this patch though. Diva's Thruster CC and Brigitte's Rocket Flail don't quite send enemies far enough if they're also trying to stop themselves moving in air, which they can do, so be very wary of that. There's actually plenty of heroes that have utility to make sure you don't stay in the field's range and perhaps more importantly a lot of them can now be played together but before we get to that let's just have a little chat about Sombra. Now the fact that she has one of the quickest answers to the field in the form of hack makes her strong even if you have to be quite subtle about trying to make this play. If all of Baptiste's teammates within the field notice you going for it you can die very quickly. The fact EMP immediately breaks Baptiste's amplification matrix or field is a bonus but there's an even subtler reason why she should absolutely be part of of your plans when facing Baptiste comps. Despite her not being an out and out threat to Baptiste himself like Doomfist is, she can struggle to kill him, it's not as easy as say farming a Zen, on the PTR and soon on the live server she got a buff to her hack. In that when hacking map health packs, the hack's cooldown is halved in comparison to hacking an enemy target. This is good for multiple reasons. Firstly, her uptime will now be that much more efficient. She will spend less time setting up and recovering in teamfights. She will be a threat more often. But secondly, and perhaps even worse for Baptiste, having map health packs hacked is really good for one of the best answers to him, and that's multi-DPS split comps. When you play multi-DPS, you often forgo a tank or healer to try and leverage mobility and lethality to your advantage. With Sombra hacking more map health packs, her split comp has better options to disengage, heal, and re-engage. The comp's uptime is improved by her individual buff. Creating a split offense does terrible things to a Baptiste. Firstly, again, Against that, like I said earlier, which one of the mini fights does Baptiste use his field on? Even if he gets value on one of the exchanges, there's still others that he can do little about. Secondly, Baptiste's healing isn't that dependable when his teammates are spread out. You wouldn't want to use him in a split comp himself for exactly that reason. His healing grenades get value when being fired into chunky bodies all huddled together. It's difficult for him to heal a Genji or a Tracer zipping about really fast, never mind a hero like Farah who flies, who he can't really heal at all. When a multi DPS comp plays well, they drag an enemy comp all over the place with the multiple angles. A death ball can be divided and conquered in this way so that eventually they're fighting like a split comp themselves yet are terrible at doing so. 
Baptiste can't really heal or protect them if that happens. What's perhaps even worse now is that you can run Doom Sombra and Wrecking Ball in one comp because they all got the buffs they needed to make this a reality. A comp with those three in it can decide when they want to fight, when they don't, and have the utility to get out safely. It has crowd control with Doom and Ball, Damage and Disable. All of those spell trouble for a Baptiste. It's commonly the case that a hero with a very sharp value kit has very sharp and severe counters. Baptiste is like that, and by using mobility and or crowd control, you can split his attention to the point where he just can't keep the plate spinning anymore. Now say you're not in the ideal situation. You're playing ranked, and your teammates either don't want to run some of these heroes or can't, instead choosing to play some form of generic 222 into a Baptiste, perhaps with ranged damage. My fellow Diamonds will recognize this as it's every game they've ever played. What are some picks that you you can make that aren't the best case scenario where your whole team works together and either dive or have multi DPS. Well, let's have another talk about Junkrat. If both teams are playing a ranged damage 222, then the Widow who has the immortality field has an advantage over the one that doesn't because part of Widow's game is that she has to peek to get value. By enabling her or any ranged damage threat for that matter to take more aggressive space, they are at the same time limiting where you can go safely. Well, this is where Junk comes in. Junkrat does doesn't have to peek to get value. He can shoot round corners safely, not at the Widow, but at the Widow's team. Baptiste will not be able to heal through Junkrat's improved damage. Just do the math. Baptiste heals 60 per second with his grenades. Junk does 130 damage now on the PTR with a direct hit that doesn't need to crit. Healing grenades might be easier to hit granted, but against big targets like barriers and the tanks that carry them, all while being safe, that's a losing proposition. Plus, you have his mines for displacement out of the field and to finish off kills. The Baptiste might be safe with his ability to take high ground and stay at range, but for those at the front, it could get rough really, really quickly. The idea then is to limit or directly nullify Immortality Field, split Baptiste's attention and overload him so he can't sustain his value by using mobile comps, or go directly at his impact with heroes like Doom, Sombra and Wrecking Ball. Crowd control can work, as can range damage if you play it right. Just don't walk at him slowly death balls expecting big value alt combos to carry because that's playing into his hands and that's about it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to leave a rating if you never want to miss another video of ours again please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to join the notification squad you'll be in great company and finally please follow the your overwatch twitter so you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff i've been eddie the chump and until next time 